Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to see velocity after any displacement. Let's start with a sim. A person pushing a stroller starts from rest, uniformly accelerating at the rate of 0.5 meter per second square. What is the velocity of the stroller after it has traveled 4.75? To understand the problem, it's very important to sketch what we want to know, what do we want to do. The problem is talking about stroller. Well, we have a stroller right here. And the other thing is we can decide if our stroller is moving to the right or moving to the left. In this case, to make numbers positive, I'm going to say my stroller is moving to, our, to the right and my central point is going to be this point. This is called as a frame of reference, where I am looking the things moving or happening. Now we need to know what is what we know and what we want to know. What do we know? The initial velocity we know is zero meters per second. Why? Because we start from rest. Then our initial velocity is zero meters per second. What else do we know? We know the value of A, the acceleration, is 0 0.5 meter per second squared. And we want to know displacement. And we want to know the velocity after 4.75 meters. As I said, we want to know the final velocity after 4.75 meters. Then we don't know this data. Okay, now we know we can use this formula to know the final velocity. We isolate to take away the second power we can rearrange this as initial velocity to the second power plus two times acceleration times displacement. Always when we have square root, we have a positive or negative answer. Now, how to decide which sign we're going to use? Well, our stroller is speeding up. Then, the sign we're going to use is going to be positive. Let's plug in the values. Final velocity will be equal to initial velocity is zero. Then what do we have? We have two times acceleration, 0 0.5 meter per second squared don't forget that units of acceleration is distance divided by time to a second power. Using SI unit is meter per second square. Times displacement, where displacement is 4.75 meters. Now, because it's final velocity, Velocity is meter per second. If you want to prove it with the units, if you have meters times meters, meter square divided by second square. Square root of meter square is meter, and square root of second square is seconds. Times displacement, where displacement is 4.75 meters. Now, because it's final velocity, velocity is meter per second. If you want to prove it with the units, if you have meters times meters, meter square divided by second square. Square root of meter square is meter, and square root of second square is seconds. Then, the final answer is 2.18 meters per second.
after 4.75 meters, the velocity is 2.18 meters per second. Let's do another exercise. For example, a car traveling at 7 meters per second accelerates uniformly at a rate of 0.80 meters per second squared for a distance of 245 meters. Remember, it's important in physics to sketch our problem. This is our car, my coordinate plane, this is going to be the y-axis, and the x-axis. My car is traveling and travels 245 meters to this point, okay, to the same point. The distance from here to here is 245 meters. Now the question is, what is the final velocity after traveling this distance? Well, in my problem, I can see, I know initially, at 7 meters per second, it's telling to me this is going to be my initial velocity. At the rate of 0 0.80, Remember, rate is a change in velocity. I said change in, but a rate of velocity is acceleration. Then, 0 0.80 meter per second square is going to be my acceleration. And finally, I have the distance. We can use the same formula. Final velocity equals to initial velocity square plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. Again, we need to decide what's going to be the sign we're going to use. It's going to be positive or negative. My velocity is, my velocity is increasing or my velocity is decreasing. That are my two options. Well, we'll see. We have final velocity we already know we can have a positive or negative velocity. Remember, but negative velocity could mean we are decreasing our velocity or we are in the left direction. Initial velocity is 7 meter per second square plus 2 times 0 0.8 meter per second square times displacement times 245 and the square root of this the final velocity is equal to again we don't have we don't know if we are going to choose the positive or negative sign it's going to depend if final velocity is less than initial velocity it needs to be negative because it means i'm decreasing my my speed but if final velocity is greater than initial velocity it needs to be positive because i'm speeding up My final answer is 21 meters per second. Then we're going to choose the positive sign because we're speeding up. 21 meters per second. Let's do another problem. An aircraft has a lift up speed of 33 meters per second. What minimum constant acceleration does this require if the aircraft is to be airborne after a takeoff run of 240 meters. Always in physics, it's important to understand what is, where is my coordinate plane. Because we are not taking all the plane. We are just saying the plane is just like a particle. It's just like a point in the space. That's why we always determine where is going to be my coordinate plane, where I'm going to start, and the distance from this point is traveling to the other point. 
then what is the problem talking about? We have the final velocity and we know the final velocity at this point is going to be 33 meters per second. We also know the initial velocity is going to be 0 meter per second. And the distance is 240 meters. The question is, what minimum constant acceleration does this require to the aircraft? Using the formula, the final velocity to the second power is equal to initial velocity to the second power plus two times acceleration times displacement in x. Because we want to find the acceleration, we need to isolate. Isolate is the process to let alone the variable and to know its value. Well, here I have a initial velocity to second power. First, what I'm going to move is what is adding or subtracting. In this case, initial velocity, which is positive. I need to subtract minus initial velocity at both sides. Then I'm going to have final velocity to the second power minus initial velocity to the second power is equals to two times accelerations delta x. Now, the two and delta x are multiplying the acceleration. Therefore, the final velocity to the second power minus initial velocity to the second power divided by 2 times delta x is equals to acceleration. If they're multiplying in this side, they're going to be dividing in the other side. Now it's time to plug in the values. The final velocity is 33 meters per second. So second power minus zero meters per second from the initial velocity. All of this divided by two times the displacement. Two hundred forty meters. And all of this needs to be equal to acceleration. Okay. Therefore, this is equals to 2.3 meters per second square equals to acceleration.